Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar, Evaluate Technology Potential. Thank you for joining. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Eloise Nodi. I am Product Consultant at Expernova. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the question tool on GoToWebinar and I will answer at the end. If I don't have enough time to answer your questions, we will come back to you with personalized answers. You can also contact us by email on the following address, contact at expernova.com. Today, we will see how to complete your studies to evaluate the potential of a technology through the analysis of the attractiveness of the field of technology and the identification of a relay of experts. Before switching to the Expernova platform, let's take five minutes to look at the analysis of a technology. R&D directors face a set of investment opportunities in different technology development projects. These projects are a central part of the company's development, but not all can be pursued. The ar arbitrations required are at the heart of the decision-making power of the R&D experts. The ability to evaluate the potential of a technology used for negotiation in the transfer or the exploitation of licenses, the implementation of an intellectual property valuation policy, the analysis of relative weight in a consortium and the evaluation of a company is vital to good technological project management. So how to evaluate, evaluate a technology potential? Many articles on technology portfolios have been published in the last 30 years. Some models suggest to cross the perspectives of productivity increase with those of yield. Others recommend relying on the importance of technology and the competitive position of the company. These are just two methods to evaluate company technology portfolio. However, it should be noted that the consulting strategies portfolio models, such as the BCG matrix, the General Electric McKinsey matrix, or the ADL matrix, are based on the distinction between the analysis of internal and external factor. It means internal under control and external factor. So in other words, the division given by the SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In summary, a division between assets and skills that depend on the behavior of the company and its decision and between the elements that depend on its environment. Now, let's see how to distinguish between controllable and uncontrollable criteria. The attractiveness criteria of a technology are external, so you have no control over it. The attractiveness of a technological field is dependent on various external factors which define the situation experienced by all companies in the same field. External factors include, for example, the market potential, what is the market volume opened by the technology, what is the range of possible application. Another factor is the competitive situation, the number of competitors, the level of competitor engagement, the competitive intensity, the barrier to copy and reproduce. Let's, uh, another factor, sorry, is the technical potential, the position of the technology in its life cycle, the potential for pro progress, the technology transfer potential, the threat of technology substitution. And a last factor can be the socio-political situation. What about the public development support? Evaluation criteria of a technological competitiveness of a company are internal, that is to say, controllable. They are assets and skill, skills that depend on the behavior of the company and its decisions. On this point, the position of one company may be very different from another. Evaluation criteria of a technological competitiveness of a company include the technological resources, the experience accumulated in the field, the registered patents, the value of laboratory and equipment, 
the skills of the team. And another criteria can be the additional resources, the financing capacity, the ability to protect against imitation, the quality of the relation between R&D and production or between R&D and marketing. So today, we will not go into a SWOT analysis of a technology potential, but we encourage you to discover how to complete these studies with a mapping of your research ecosystem. So I will take you through a common use case demonstrating how to use Expernova to evaluate the attractiveness of the domain of a technology and to identify a relay of experts. Founded in 2008, Expernova is a web platform that analyzes millions of scientific and technological works, such as patents, publication, clinical trials, projects, conference proceedings, etc. So, it's a web, Expernova is a web platform that analyzes the scientific works in order to provide its user with a pre precise mapping of the most innovating actors on a global scale. The Big Data Expernova solution provides, provides a global vision of worldwide expertise and network on specific research topics and enables organizations to monitor their innovation ecosystem experts, future partners, suppliers, customers, and competitors. Expernova is the only platform providing rich and dynamic expert and organization profiles, revealing advanced expertise, influence, and innovation strategy. Today, Expernova works with more than 100 innovation leaders, from companies to research institutions in more than... Um, 17 countries. For this demonstration, the research topic for our use case will be the polymer-based bioimplant surface treatment. Biomaterials are by definition materials that are biocompatible with the human body. However, like all materials, they can undergo alteration in the biological environment of their use. This is called biodegradation. In order to minimize this interaction, it is necessary to perform a su surface treatment to improve their biocompatibility. My company works in biotechnology and has developed a technique to cover the surface of an implant with a polymer-based material to improve its biocompatibility. I wish to complete my studies to assess the attractiveness of the field of this technology and to identify a relay of experts. So let's switch to the Expernova platform. And so the first step is to start a search. So to do so, enter your query in the search field. And then click on search to run the query and view the results in the search results interface. The next step is to access information via the search result interface. So this is a dashboard of results. It gives you an overview of the key players working on your technology. Let's take a quick look at this result interface for this query on bio-based polymer implants. So at the top of the screen, you have your query, and below you can see a header that displays six pictograms that show the type and the number of results. So, for example, here on the bio implants, Expernova has identified more than 25,000 experts working on this topic. Expernova has identified more than 1,000 organizations, more than 6,000 publications, then, in orange, we have identified more than 1,400 1, patents, 134 projects, and 63 clinical trials. Under the heading, you have access to list and graph. From the different lists, you can access to the list of experts, that is to say the individuals who are interested by the bio implants. Below, we can find boxes the list of 
the organization, so you have the companies, R&D centers, and the university or the academic organization uh, that are working on the bio implants. And finally, you have the list of the scientific works, that is to say, the scientific publication, the patent family, the projects, and the clinical trials related to the bio implants. For each list, Expernova display the four most relevant profiles or works on your topic. So if you want to view all the elements, you have to display the complete list of identified actors or works. Before going to the list of organizations working on bioimplants, I would like to quickly show you the scientific domain graph. This graph allows you to visualize in which scientific domains are mainly the concept of your research. Here we can see that the publication on bioimplants come mostly from human health and pathology and also life science. Now, let's go back to the list of the organization. Are the organization working, are there organization working on the bioimplants? If so, how many and which ones? What is the typology of these actors? Razor academic or industrial? Do my competitors also work on this subject? Is this a topic worth raised by large, large organization or startup? We have seen that Expernova has identified more than 1,000 organizations working on the bioimplants. So let's do a focus on the industrial, that is to say the company. Uh, in other words, let's identify the list of companies working on the bioimplants. Bio we can see here that their uh, Expernova has identified 472 companies on our subject. So we can already deduce that this is a subject that interests both academic and industry. By clicking on the More button, you can display the list of companies working on bioimplants. So from that list, you can quickly see which companies are working on the bioimplants, and you can apply filter to the list. So you have a list of filters here. For example, you have the geographical filter that allows you to target a geographical area. It means to display, for example, only American company. And you have also a um, filter by organization type uh, that allows you to detect startups, for example, who are interested by this subject. Then, on the list, unsurprisingly, we find at the top of the list the major pharmaceutical or chemical industry groups, such, such as Johnson & Johnson, the Abbott Laboratory, Medtronic, um, Rekit Benkinzer, etc., etc., Sanofi. And um, at the bottom of the list, it will be possible to detect possible new entrants. Finally, from that list, you can quickly see if your competitors have also positioned themselves on the subject. Now, we will go more into details to access the expertise of these companies and qualify the, tip, the type, the volume, and the degree of maturity of their scientific work on bioimplants. So you can directly access an organization profile by clicking on, on its name. For example, let's take the example of Johnson & Johnson. So I click on the name to display the profile of this company on the right here. And let's see what information we can find on the Johnson & Johnson profile. So you have the name of the company at the top, the type of organization. You have a link with all the subsidiary and the division of that group that have their own profile. Below you can find the main research subject of the organization. You've got, on the, uh, you've got a description here of the company, and there, here, you can find all the info, contact information of the organization. Then, you have access to the expertise of Johnson & Johnson, and so you can check the expertise of your organization on your subject. Then, I would like to show you the why feature. The why features show you elements of analysis on the expertise of the company. That is to say that Expernova analyzes for you why this profile is considered relevant to the subject of your research 
And so here we can find different information related to the experience of the group. How long has it been working on the subject? Has it published recently on the subject? Here we can see that Johnson & Johnson have been working for 25, 24 years on bioimplant and has recently published on the subject. In the network section, Expernova has identified for you the division of the group working on the bio implant. So it is clickable and you can access to the different profile of the division that have their own why telling you why these divisions are relevant on our subject. And Expernova has also identified the people from Johnson & Johnson who work on the bio implant. Of course, it's clickable and you can access to the list of these experts. And to finish, you can also access the works done by Johnson & Johnson on our subject. Here we can see, for example, that Johnson & Johnson has published four scientific publications on that topic. Uh, he has invented 87 patents family on the topic. This allows you to see what technology have already been filled, and you can verify that your technology has not already been filled. So, we also can see the evolution on the graph of the patent filled by Johnson & Johnson on the topic. If you want to access to a patent, you can simply click on it and you can easily access to the patent. Let's go back to the works. So we can see also that Johnson & Johnson has participated to a clinical trial. And here, it can allow you to evaluate the degree of maturity of the work. So if I click on the clinical tri trial to display it, you can access to the clinical trial, and then there are some information such as the title, the abstract, the keyword, and also, also information related to the, that clinical trial. For example, we can see that this clinical trial is in phase three. Phase three is a pivotal study. It is a comparative effectiveness study itself. It compares treatments with either a placebo or a reference treatment. So the groups are lay, large, often several thousand participants. So let's go back to Johnson and Johnson profile. So we saw all the sections. So remember the why, explain you why this company is relevant in the rank. Now, Expernova allows you to navigate within organizations' collaboration networks. This can help you to detect potential partners. So to do this, let's now display the collaborative network graph, which brings out extended networks on bioimplant and also allows to visualize the main interaction between R&D centers' company. Um, so interaction can be scientific collaboration, such as co-publication or a common participation in project or clinical trials. Each bubble represents an actor and is clickable and allows to display the profile on the right. The more an R&D center or company has a strong activity on the subject, the more it is highlighted on the chart. So on the bioimplant based on polymer, we see a rather dense graph of collaboration with academic actors, such as the Department of Chemical Engineering, such as the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research, Department of the MIT, etc., etc. We can see also some companies, such as the Abbott Laboratory, and also Sanofi, let's zoom in a little bit more, etc., etc. Uh, by flying over each of the bubbles with the mouse, you can visualize the main collaboration of this organization. For example, with the, you can see that the Abbott Laboratories collaborates with Medtronic, the Harvard Institute, Harvard Institute, uh, and Finally, on this graph, we can see a multitude of peripheral networks 
made up of smaller company or institution, research institutes that are also working on this subject. So this graph gives us an overview of the network of collaboration of the main actors working on biodegradable implants. It allows you to quickly identify the main actors who have expertise on the subject, and you can also view their collaboration on the subject. Let's take the example of the Abbott Laboratories. So, to display the profile, I click on the right. Expernova gives you access to the collaborative network of Abbott Laboratory and the details of the collaboration on our subject. So, to access the collaboration network, just click on, in the network and community section, click on 16 connection on the topic. So on this graph, you can see the organization with which Abbott collaborates or has, has collaborated on the bio implants. So you have Abbott Laboratory, which is in the middle, and all over you can see the different organization with which um, the Abbott Laboratory are collaborating or has collaborated. Below you can see a list that gives you exactly the same information but in a different form. Then, the graph, you've got three graphs here. The, um, they give you information on the nature of the Abbott network. So the classes graph shows the, distrib oh, sorry, the distribution of collaborations by ty type of organization. Here we can see that Abbott collabor collaboration on our subject are 31% with school and university and only 7% with the company. So we can say that on our subject, Abbott has a mainly academic network. The other graph, the country graph, uh, shows the distribution of collaboration by country. So here we see that Abbott's collaboration are at 56% with American organization. Finally, the topic chart allows to visualize in which scientific fields are located the co-publication resulting from the collaboration between two organizations. This graph is dynamic, and so when you click on the domain, you can access the subdomain. Then, below, on the list, the interest of the list is that you can apply filter to filter the collaboration. For example, you want to see only the American organization with which the Abbott Laboratory has collaborated. So you can use the country filter uh, to apply. And you have also here the classes filter that allows you to filter the list by type of organization. For example, you can filter your list by company in order to check if one of your competitors uh, is not working already with the Abbott Laboratory on our subject. Then, once we saw the collaboration, we would like to access to the um, details of the collaboration. So to do so, we can click on the open connection here to access the different works. So now I will display the collaboration between Erasmus and the Abbott Laboratories, and we can see that they have co-published one common scientific domain, uh, one common scientific document on the topic, and they have been working together on the topic for 20 years. Of course, the publication is clickable and you can easily access to that publication like this. Now, let's go back to the dashboard of results. So, we saw with Expernova that we can obtain a global vision of the actors and competitors present on the technology. We were able to access our expertise and scientific works in order to qualify them and evaluate the degree of maturity of their work. And we were able to navigate within the collaboration network and detect potential partners. 
Now, we will view the list of experts working on bioimplants to identify a relay of experts on bioimplants that can help us to deepen our study. So to do so, to view the list of experts, we will go to the people block and then we will, we are going to click on the more to display the full list of experts that are working, who are working on the bioimplants. So at the top of the list are the most relevant experts on this topic who can potentially be opinion leaders. You can change the ranking criteria here and you also have filter. You can apply filter to the list of experts, for example, a geographical filter to display only a Canadian experts, for example. Then we will check the expertise of the experts. So to do so, we will open the, their profile to access their expertise and their work. So you can directly open the profile on an expert, on an expert by clicking on his name. So let's take the example of Stefan Windecker. So I click on his name and it displays the profile on the right. So what kind of information can we find in the profile? We can find the name of the expert and his affiliation. You have contact detail on the right and one more time you can access to his expertise and here for example we can validate his expertise on the biodegradable polymer. Then you still have the why section that explain you why Stefan Windecker is relevant on our subject. So we've got some elements in terms of experience. Here we can see that this expert has been working on the topic for 14 years. And we have element on his network. So we can also access, like we did for the organization, we can access to his collaborative network. And at the end on the people and work section, you can see if you can access to the works of Stefan Windecker on the topic. Now, let's go to the network of collaboration of Stefan Windecker, and to do so, you can click on this link. So, Expernova allows you to access an expert network of, coll of collaboration on a research topic, and this allows you to easily visualize with whom this expert collaborates, and thus give you clues about his network and his zone of influence. You can navigate within his network of collaboration and visualize with whom he collaborates on the subject of your research. You can see with whom he co-published a publication or he has participated in a clinical trial. You can also evaluate the size of his network and, the, and therefore its influence. Is it national, international, academic or industrial? So here we can see the prof, uh, Stefan Windecker in the middle here and all of the, all the person, all the experts with whom he collaborates or has collaborated. You have exactly the same information below under the form of a list. And the benefit of the list is that you can modify the classification, the ranking, and also you can apply some filter, for example, to display only the American collaboration or, or um, the Netherlands collaboration, for example. If I display here, here, so we saw that Stefan Windecker has issued as a network of 160 collaboration, and if we see the European collaboration, we can deduce that Stefan Windecker has essentially an European network, 126 collaboration out of 160 which are American. And if we look at the affiliation of the expert, we can see that they are essentially academic. So this information allows us to better visualize the area of influence of Stefan Windecker. You can access the complete profile of the expert by clicking on their name, and you can access to the co-publication of the two experts. So, for example, if you want to access the co-publication done by Stefan Windecker and Peter Juni, click on Open Connection 
to display the connection form between Stefan Windeker and Peter Juni. And from there, in the Y section, we can see that in terms of experience, they have been working together for nine years. And the result is their co-publication, 16 co-publication on that topic. And Expernova will also identify a common participation to a clinical trial on our topic. You can also see their common expertise, which is the biodegradable, biodegradable polymer. So it's really our topic. Now let's go back to the list of experts. So you can check the exp sorry. You can check the expertise of each profile, and when you find interesting profile, you can then, once you have identified the potential expert who can help you to complete your study, you can capitalize on your research by creating an expert shortlist to contact. And to do so, you can bookmark or export the different profile with the export and how to bookmark feature in the nav left navigation menu. So that brings me to the end of today's webinar. So to conclude, let's summarize all that we have done. So today we have seen how from a few keywords you can identify in a few seconds organizations working on the bioimplants. We have accessed their profile, the profile of this company to verify their expertise. We also had access to their work, their patents, their publication, their participation in projects on on our research topic or their participation to clinical trials, and that allowed us to qualify the type, the volume, and the degree of maturity of the scientific works on bioimplant. We had access to their expert working on the bioimplant, and we also had access to their network of collaboration to see with whom company collaborate on my research topic. So this information allows me to visualize the interaction between the different actors to detect potential partners. These steps give us a global vi vision of my research topic. Then we detected and identified recognized experts on the subject by displaying the list of experts working on the bioimplant. We validate their expertise, experiences, and influences by accessing their expertise, their work, and their collaborative network on bioimplant. And finally, we were able to create a short list of experts to contact thanks to the bookmark and export function. This will allow me to have a relay of experts on bioimplants that will help me validate and complete my study. I would like to highlight that I did this webinar in a standard environment. However, depending on your needs, Expernova can create customized result interface, for example, with a focus on specific geographical areas. If you are interested, do not hesitate to contact me. I realize that the time is almost gone, so I propose you to go to the questions. So we have two questions which are quite similar. Uh, can we access the works done, the scientific works done by a company? And the other one is, how do we know that a scientist has published or has invented some patents? So Expernova provides you with a publication, the patent families, the clinical trial, and the project done, done by an organization or an expert on a technology. And this information can be found in the why on the people and work section. A last question, because I, we, the time is already gone. How do you rank the list of organizations in the search results? Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, the algorithm to evaluate the relevancy includes a lot of various criteria that are taken into consideration. Um, the algorithm is set to cross-reference information from uh, large families of content, such as the publication, the collaborative project, the conference studies, patent, web pages, etc., etc. So in order to explain you simply how the relevant ranking is defined, let's say that the algorithm is combining advanced technique for information retrieval to the following criteria. 
the number of occurrences of the keyword in the scientific works. The position of the keyword in the, um, in the work, is it in the title, in the abstract, in the note field? Uh, we take also into account the type of document because each document has a specific coefficient. So as an example, a scientific poster will have less weight than an article reviewed by a committee. And we take also into account the date of the document. Recent documents have a higher coefficient. Uh, so this uh, webinar is now finished. And for the questions I did not answer, I will send you a personalized answer. Now it's your turn to use Expernova. If you are not yet a user, please feel free to ask for a personalized demo at contact at Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.